In this video, I want to talk about conservation of angular momentum. Uh, before we do that, but recall when we were looking at conservation of linear momentum. We said we had some net external force and that it was equal to the uh, derivative of the momentum. Um, you'll recall that, that where that came from was F is equal to, to MA, and then the, the acceleration was the derivative of the velocity, and since M was just a constant, we could say it was a time derivative of, of uh, mass times velocity, which was then the momentum. And so what that said was, if there was uh, no net external force, then the time rate of change of the total momentum was zero, which meant the total linear momentum was constant. Okay, so let's just do this, the look at the same approach with uh, torques and angular acceleration. So if we have some torque for a rotation of an object in a plane, we, we always limit ourselves that to a, to, uh, a single planar rotation, is equal to the moment of inertia about the axis perpendicular to that plane times the uh, angular acceleration. Well, the angular acceleration is, is just the um, time derivative of the angular velocity, and the ri is just a, a constant depending on the, how the, the structure of the object. So we can bring that inside the derivative, and then we have here, which is the angular momentum. So we have that the net external torque on the system is the time derivative of the angular momentum. And so just like before, if the net torque is zero, then the angular momentum is conserved. So net external torque equals zero implies angular momentum conserved. Now, which means, of course, you conserve uh, both the magnitude and the direction of the angular momentum. Okay, so angular momentum is conserved, no net external torque. Let's just look at it, uh, it easy enough. Let's just look at a simple example. I'm gonna uh, bring in here my merry-go-round Okay, this is a uh, hundred kilogram merry-go-round uh, radius of two meters. So I'm going to start with a uh, 50 kilogram person out on the edge when the uh, system is rotating at an angular uh, velocity of one half uh, radians per second. So it's angular velocity of 0.5 with the person on the edge. And then the person, while it's rotating, walks radially to the center. What happens to the system? Okay, so um, the person walks radially to the center, so there's there's, uh, we're saying it's, it's rotating on, on frictionless bearings. There's no net external torque on the system. And so the, uh, um, the uh, 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 angular momentum has to be conserved. I mean, you think there's, there's sort of a contact force that's, that's pointing up, supporting it against gravity, which is pointing down, but all of those are uh, parallel to the, uh, uh, the this axis of rotation, and so um, the the uh, that on the center of mass, of course, as long as the axis is keeping it so it can't bend. If there's say like this person, like the, the, is there center of mass on the the uh, the object? If there's a gravitational torque on the person, that's balanced by the gravitational port torque on the uh, uh, not sort of on the axle. And so, as long as all those surfaces are frictionless, there's no net external torque on the system. Essentially, there the we we've isolated it. Okay, so, so what happens to this 
what does that mean? So we say that, that then the uh, angular momentum is conserved, which means the initial angular momentum is the equal to the final angular momentum. And it's all pointing in, in one direction. Uh, note that given this orientation, both our angular velocity and our angular momentum are oriented up given the, a clockwise rotation, the, the way sort of we're looking at the merry-go-round in perspective. And so at the moment, we'll just deal with our, our magnitudes. The uh, initial angular momentum is equal to the final angular momentum. Well, the initial angular momentum is equal to the initial moment of inertia times the uh, initial angular velocity, and the final angular momentum is equal to the final moment of inertia times the final angular velocity. So, so let's go ahead and, and calculate what those are. So initial, what is the initial moment of inertia? Well, again, it's, we looked at a problem like this before. It's the moment of inertia of the disk plus the moment of inertia of the person. And so this, this times the initial angular velocity. The moment of inertia of the disk is one-half uh, mass of the disk times the radius of the disk squared plus the moment of inertia of the person, which is the mass of the person, and when they start, we said they were uh, at the edge of the merry-go-round. So that's also the radius of the disk squared, the distance they are from the center. And if they're at the edge, they're at the radius of the disk as well. And that's all times the initial angular velocity. So final, then, again, we have the uh, moment of inertia of the disk plus the moment of inertia of the person final times the angular velocity final, the moment of inertia of the disk didn't change, it was the location of the person that changed. So this is one half mass of the disk, uh, r of the disk squared, plus now the mass of the person times the location of the person relative to the axis. Well, if they're at the center, their distance from the axis axis in the particle approximation is zero. So the moment of inertia changed as the person walked to the center. So uh, let's go ahead and, and um, divide uh, these two expressions. They're supposed to be equal to each other. So uh, let's, there's equal to each other. So the, um, um, if I divide them, they should be equal to one. Right. All right. So, what does this this say? This says that uh, uh, I'm going to divide both of these terms by one half mass of the disk times radius of the disk squared. So the first term that's just one plus then um, divide this term. I guess this term by by uh, this term, and the radius of the disks cancel. And so I'll get two mass of the person divided by the mass of mass of the disk, uh, then times the ratio of the angular velocities equal to one. Well, I'm what am I interested in finding? What I'm interested in is in my uh, final angular velocity, so I can bring that over to the other side, and I have my final angular velocity is equal to one plus Two twice the ratio of the masses times the initial angular velocity. And so uh, th these are all positive numbers, and this is a one here. And so our final angular velocity is going to be faster than our initial angular velocity. Let's We can plug in numbers. Uh, two mass of the person is 50, disk is 100, one half uh, time times two is one, plus one is two, so that's equal to twice our initial angular velocity. Our initial angular velocity is one half, and so our final is equal to one radians per second. So we doubled the angular velocity. The object is now spinning twice as fast as it was when the person was at the edge. So by walking radially to the center, the entire system sped up to twice its angular velocity. And that's because the total angular momentum of the system had to be conserved.